Hello and welcome to a new edition of Vaughan and Vivo. Yes, another English class for you and for me. So, manos a la obra. Are you ready? Let's start. Okay, number one, dile que espere mi decisión. Tell him to wait for my decision. I'm not ready to make a decision yet. I'm not ready to make a decision yet. I don't like to make rash decisions. When I make a decision, I need to have time to ponder all of the different factors. I need to have time to think about every possible repercussion. I need to think about these things. And I don't like making decisions rashly. I don't like to make rash decisions. Un británico, muchos británicos dirían, I don't like to take uh, rash decisions. I'm a decision maker. My job requires that I make decisions on a daily basis. Some decisions are small, other decisions are big. Some decisions are critical, and other decisions are less critical. But I always have to make decisions, and I don't like to make rash decisions. I like to think things through, to think things through. Means pensar las cosas desde el principio hasta el final. Antes de tomar la decisión, to think things through. Okay, the, the entire decision-making process. Yes, I'm a decision-maker, and I follow a certain process in making decisions. I think things through properly. I don't make rash decisions. Ya, ya son cinco las veces, o seis, que he dicho rash o rashly. Rash has two meanings. R-A-S-H. Rash. Okay. Rash has two very different meanings. As a noun, como sustantivo, as a noun, rash means una especie de erupción de la piel. Say, Oof, I have a rash on my hand and my forearms, a rash. Sometimes if you're allergic to certain things, the certain type of paint, maybe a ceramic, it, it produces a rash. It's a strange rash on the back of my right hand. Okay, a rash. Now, to be rash, aquí es adjetivo, no seas rash, okay? Means muy precipitado en las cosas. Don't be rash, no seas precipitado. Wait, stop, ponder, think about things, look at each alternative, consider the pros and cons of each alternative, consider the advantages and disadvantages of each alternative, and then make a decision but make your decision as scientifically as possible. Of course, it's impossible to have all the information you need to make a totally 100% sure decision. That's impossible. You always need to work with a certain degree of insecurity. That's part of life. But try to be as scientific as possible and don't make rash decisions. No tomes decisiones precipitadas. Don't make rash decisions. Okay. Dile que espere mi decisión. Tell him to wait for my decision and tell him to be patient. I will make a decision and he will have my decision by next Friday. Tell him that he'll have my decision by next Friday. Okay. También podría hacer, decir lo siguiente. Tell him he will have my decision next Friday or tell him he will have my decision for next Friday. What's the difference? Okay. By next Friday means el viernes próximo como más tarde. Fecha tope viernes. Okay, by. Tell him he'll have, for next Friday is el viernes se lo doy. Se lo doy, la decisión. Pero by next Friday means a lo mejor incluso el jueves se lo digo. So, tell him to wait. Tell him to wait. En español, dile que, se, que espere. En inglés, dile esperar, literalmente. Tell him to wait. And I will give him my decision by next Friday. Como más tarde. At the latest. Pero cuando dices by next Friday, es implícito como más tarde. Uh, at the latest. And um, it's not necessary to have the decision today. We don't need to act today on this problem. We can wait one week. And I prefer to wait and do things right than to make a rash decision and do something wrong. So uh, I'm a relatively conservative manager. 
in my business, and so I make decisions conservatively. I never make rash decisions. It's not wise to make rash decisions. Wise, scrito wisi, wise significa sabio. Pero en este caso, cuando dices a wise decision, es una decisión prudente y sensata. Sensata. It's a wise decision. It's bien pensada. All right. So, dile que espere mi decisión. Tell him to wait for, wait for my decision. I will make a decision between now and Friday, and I will communicate it to you and to the organization, perhaps on Friday. Uh, les conté la, tu versión de la historia. I told them your version of the story. Story. Story is un relato, un, un cuento. Una historia que uno cuenta. History, con H, uh, aspirado al principio, is the chronological story of events that took place in the past 6,000 or 8,000 years since prehistory. History. Okay, por ejemplo, si yo, la historia de los relatos, te voy a contar desde los tiempos casi prehistóricos, la historia de todos los relatos publicados. En ese caso yo diría, the history of stories. Yes. Are you interested in stories? Relatos o cuentos que la gente cuenta. Are you interested in stories? I will tell you, I will describe to you the history of stories. Okay. Ahora, ¿y qué, qué, qué significa si yo os digo? I will tell you the story of history. Al revés. Entonces te voy a contar la historia como si fuera un relato largo. The story of history. The story of civilization. Okay. So lo a lot of times people confuse story and history. Story and history. Okay. History is the chronological order of events that have happened in the past, up to today. And a story is a, un cuento, un relato. All right, let's conté tu versión. I told them your version of the story, and they don't believe it. They said, well, there are always two sides to a story. There are always two versions to a story. Pero es más corriente en inglés, dos lados. Cada historia tiene dos lados. Otras versiones. There are always two sides to a story. Every story has... Two sides. My version is that Pepe was wrong. Your version is that Pepe was right. Well, let's wait. Let's wait and see. Esperemos a ver. En inglés decimos, esperemos y veamos. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Let's wait for the outcome. And depending on the outcome, then we'll decide whose side of the story is the true side of the story. The outcome. Esperemos el desenlace de los acontecimientos. Let's wait for the outcome. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Alguien va a tener que llamarle. Somebody's going to have to call him. I'm not going to call him. I'm the manager here. I delegate functions. My job is not to do. My job is to manage. Your job is to call him. And if you don't call him, somebody needs to call him. All right? Alguien va a tener que llamarle. Somebody is going to have to call him. Somebody is going. Somebody is going. Hago la contracción. Somebody is going. Somebody's going to call him. Somebody's going to have to call him. All right? Someone's going to have to call him. Someone. Somebody. Someone. Somebody. Someone. Somebody, someone, somebody. Ambas palabras, por supuesto, significan lo mismo. Ahora bien, lo importante es la M, que estoy cerrando la boca bien cerrada con la M siempre. Somebody, someone, one, casi como un hueso, moi. Someone, sometimes, fijaos en mi boca, sometimes, sometimes, ¿no veis? Que cierro la boca dos veces con la M, como decir mamá, no decís nana, mamá, sometimes, sometimes. Spanish people have a tendency to say sometimes, sometimes. 
In many words, you don't close your mouth with the letter M. It's normal. David, David Beckham, Beckham. No, this is Beckham. Julio Medem. No Julio Medem. Se escribe Medem, pero nadie en este país dice Julio Medem. Dice Julio Medem. And they say David Beckham. Beckham. It's Beckham. You, but in English, you must close your mouth. Okay? You must close your mouth. I, oh, I have a friend whose name is Jim. Say Jim. Everybody here can say, Hola, Jim. Jim, como si fuera Jim Kelly. Hola, Jim. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás, Jim? It's Jim. And you must close your mouth the M. Mamma mia. You must close your mouth. Sometimes. Constantemente estoy detrás de vosotros. Tiempos de sol. ¿Estás diciendo sometimes? Tiempos de sol. O algunas veces. No, estoy diciendo algunas veces. Ah, sometimes. No, sometimes. Estoy exager exagerando. Sometimes. All right. Someone, someone, somebody, someday, sometime, some people, some other people, some of us, some of you, some of them, some of us, some of those people, some of, some of the problems, some of the problems, some of the problems. Algunos de los problemas son fáciles de resolver, otros no. Some of the problems, some of the problems, some of, some of, some of, some of the problems are easy to solve, and some of the problems aren't so easy to solve. Ahora escuchad como lo digo de corrido. Some of the problems, some of the problems, la M, la hago. Lo que no hago es la F de of. Lo convierto en un a. Summer, summer, summer. Casi como un británico diría verano, summer. In the summertime. Okay, summer. Some of them, some of them are easy to solve, and some of them aren't so easy. Some of them. Some of us. Algunos de nosotros van a ir a la playa con vosotros. Some of us, some of us, summer, summer, summer. Try to practice this. I recommend algunos de nosotros Alguno de vosotros, alguno de, algunos de ellos. Some of us, some of you, and some of them agree. But some of us, and some of them, and some of you don't agree. Practice this. Forzando la cerradura de la boca, el cierre de la boca, cuando pasáis por la M. Some of us. Algunos pensamos. Así decís en castellano. Algunos pensamos que, que estás loco. Some of us. Porque en inglés hay que añadir of us. En español, al conjugar con pensamos, entendemos que es la primera persona del plural. Pero en inglés tenemos que añadir el us. Some of us think you're crazy. But some of us think you're very intelligent. Some of them think you're crazy. Some of them, etc., etc., etc. All right, practice it. Practice it. Some of us. So, we're talking about some of us. Some of the problems. Some of the time. Una, uh, algunas veces, sometimes, some of the time. Algunas de las veces. O sea, algún, algún par, alguna parte del tiempo. Sometimes. Some of the time. Some of the time. I use this book. And some of the time. Some of the time. Some of the. Some of the some of the time I use this book. All right. ¿Me puedes, suma, ¿Me puedes sumar estas cifras, por favor? Can you add up these figures? Can you add up these figures? To add, A-D-D, doble D, es sumar o añadir, agregar. Okay, to add. To add up is ir sumando. Solemos añadir el up. Can you add up these figures, estas cifras? Yes. Can you add them up for me? Can you add them up for me? Me las puedes sumar, por favor. Can you up? Can you add them up for me, please? Add them up. Add them up. Enlazando, add them up. Them up. Them up. Como una mopa. Can you add them up? All right. For me, please. Okay. To add. Déjeme añadir una cosa. Let me add something. 
It's important not only to study English, etc. Let me add. I would like to add. Es un doble de. Le quito una de. Add, que suena igual, es la forma corta de decir anuncio publicitario. An ad. I saw an ad in the paper this morning, all right, talking about your company. I saw an ad in the paper. I saw an ad in the paper. I heard an ad on TV. But usually on TV we say, I heard a commercial. There was a commercial. Un spot publicitario en la tele is a commercial. También puede decir an ad. Pero cuando se dice ad, la gente suele pensar en periódicos. I saw, or a magazine. I saw an interesting ad in uh, a magazine the other day. I saw an interesting ad this morning in the newspaper about you, about what the products you're selling. A good ad. It was a really good ad. An advertising agency produces ads. All right. ¿Quién tuvo la genial idea? Who had the great idea? This is our, a sarcastic sentence. Great. Who had the great idea? Who had the great idea? Come on. It wasn't my idea to do this television show. Was it your idea? No? Well, ¿quién tuvo la genial idea? Y ahora estoy aquí y no tengo escapatoria. Now, I'm stuck here. I'm stuck here and I have to give these silly classes on television. It wasn't my idea. Was it yours? Was it your idea? Well, whose idea was it? ¿De quién fue la idea? Whose idea was it? Who had the big idea? Who had the great idea? Yeah. ¿Quién tuvo la genial idea? Who had the great idea? No me mires a mí. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. No fue culpa mía. It wasn't my fault. No me culpes a mí. Don't blame me. I'm only an English teacher. It wasn't my fault. I come here to teach. I don't come here to prepare the lights or the sound or the uh, atmosphere or the table or the water in the cup. I only come here and sit down and start teaching. So if something else, if something goes wrong, if the lighting's not good, if the makeup is not good, it's not my fault. I don't know how to put on makeup. I don't know how to prepare lights. I don't know how to check the sound systems on these things. I don't know how to do these things. The only thing I know how to do is to teach English. I don't know how to do anything else. So if something goes wrong, si algo sale mal, it's not my fault. Don't blame me. It wasn't me. Look, if there was a problem in yesterday's program, it wasn't my fault. No es yo. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. In, in, in español, usáis en este caso, en el español de, de España, eh? porque en México no. Pero aquí se dice, no, no he sido yo. Por ejemplo, can, el, the pen, why did the pen fall into the fly? Uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Es imposible, es incorrecto gramaticalmente decir, no he sido yo en, en inglés. It, it hasn't been me. No, it wasn't me. No fui yo. It wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. Don't blame me. Blame, escrito blame. Es sustantivo y también verbo. The blame is la culpa. Okay. Put the blame on me, boy. The blame. Ahora, to blame somebody is echarle la culpa a alguien. O culpar. No me eches la culpa a mí. Don't blame me. No fue culpa mía. It wasn't my fault. En la expresión no fue culpa mía o de quién es la culpa, usamos la palabra fault. Pero blame es cuando lo usamos normalmente como verbo. No me culpes a mí, no fue mi culpa. Don't blame me, it wasn't my fault. Don't blame him, it wasn't his fault. Don't blame her, it wasn't her fault. Don't blame them, it wasn't their fault. Se pronuncia their, no their. Don't blame them, it wasn't their fault. Don't blame us. It wasn't our fault. All right. Y no me mires a mí, como si yo fuera el culpable. Don't look at me as if it were my fault. Como si fuera mi culpa. Don't look at me as if it were my fault. It were. Como si ello fuera. No se dice if it was. Eso sería decir como si era, which is not correct. Don't blame me. Don't, don't look at me. It's not, my, it's not my fault. 
I'm only the teacher here. I'm not the manager, I'm not the producer of this program. I limit my role in this program to teaching English and nothing else. All of the rest of the technical and human elements that populate this program depend on other people, not on me. So if something goes wrong, si algo sale mal, fijaos como lo digo, usamos el verbo ir, literalmente, si algo va equivocado, literalmente, wrong is equivocado, right and wrong, lo correcto, lo incorrecto. If something goes wrong, it's not my fault. So don't look at me as if it were my fault. Don't blame me for everything that happens here. It's not my fault, okay? Yeah. No es culpa mía. It's not my fault. No fue culpa mía. It wasn't my fault. Ni mañana no será culpa mía si algo va a salir mal. And tomorrow, it won't be, it won't be my fault if something goes wrong. No va a salir nada mal. Todo saldrá bien, ya verás. Nothing is going to go wrong. Nothing will go wrong. Everything will turn out fine. Don't worry, Richard. You worry too much. You worry too much. Don't worry. Nothing will go wrong. Everything will turn out fine. Todo saldrá bien. Everything will turn out beautifully, wonderfully. Everything will turn out okay. Everything will go perfectly well. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. Nos costará una fortuna hacer este programa el año próximo. It will cost us a fortune. It will cost us a fortune. It will cost us a fortune. 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 Chin, chin, chin. Chin, chin. Fortune. La T y la U en inglés. Fortune escrito. La tu, tu, te, u. Suele tener casi siempre el sonido de chu, como chufla, chu, chu, fortune, fortune, Portugal, picture, future, mature, maduro, mature, okay, legislature, okay, many more, all right, la fortuna en Portugal, las fortunas en Portugal, the fortunes in Portugal, el futuro de Portugal, the future, of Portugal, el futuro portugués, the Portuguese future, una fortuna portuguesa, a Portuguese fortune, all right, fortune. Y esto nos va a costar, ya verás, you'll see, esto nos va a costar una auténtica fortuna. This is going to cost us a real fortune. It's going to cost us a fortune, and I don't have enough money to pay for this. Me has metido en esto. You got me into this. And now I don't have enough money to pay for it. I'm not rich like you. We're partners, 50-50 in this initiative. But uh, I don't have a fortune. All right? And I don't have enough money now, okay, to pay my part. You're swimming in money, so you can pay for it, okay? All right. Los papeles estaban por aquí esta mañana. The papers were somewhere around here this morning. I don't know where they are. No sé dónde están. I don't know where they are. Do you know where they are? Do you know what time it is? Do you know where the microphone is? Do you know who I am? Do you know how many books there are on the table? Do you know what this is? Do you know how many fingers I have? Do you know how much water there is in this cup? Do you know how many people there are in this room? Do you know what I do for a living? Do you know how many classes I teach? Siempre el sujeto va primero, porque la pregunta es, do you know? El resto de la frase tiene que estar en plan afirmativo. ¿Sabes qué hora es? Do you know what time it is? En la pregunta directa es, what time is it? Pero si la pregunta es, do you know? La no estoy preguntando sobre la hora, estoy pre preguntando sobre si sabes. Do you know what time it is? 
Uh, yes, I know what time it is. It's time to take a break. Okay, so I'll be back in just five minutes. So don't go too far away. Stay relatively near your TV because I'm coming back. All right. <laughs> 